How's it going today guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. So in this video today, I'm introducing a brand new series I am doing starting out in 2020. Really excited about it. I've been planning on doing this for the last couple of months or so. And what I'm going to be doing is documenting the process of building up a $100,000 stock portfolio. Now, as far as my actual investments go, in the past, if you guys have watched my channel, you've seen me invest in a lot of stocks like Facebook or Apple or JD or Alibaba, a lot of these, you know, growth tech stocks. But what I'm actually going to be doing in this series is shifting my focus away from some of these growth stocks and investing instead in more blue chip dividend stocks. Uh, as a means of producing income primarily through dividends. And so my idea behind this is that I'm going to be earning dividends from these stocks, reinvesting those dividends, and then I'll be regularly contributing to this account as well, which will allow me to build this up to a $100,000 stock portfolio. Now, the first thing you're probably wondering is where am I going to be investing? Well, as I'm sure you guys know, over on my blog, Investing Simple, I spend a lot of time reviewing different brokerage accounts Accounts. And as far as my investing strategy, which is going to be dividend investing, the best brokerage in my opinion, and the one I'm going to be using is M1 Finance. And that is going to be for a couple of different reasons. First of all, M1 Finance allows you to invest with fractional shares, which means you don't have to have enough money to buy an entire share of any stock or ETF that trades on the platform. So the advantage here is that when I'm reinvesting my dividends across my portfolio, I don't have to worry about the share price and I can remain fully invested. The second reason why I'm going to be using M1 Finance is because they do have a form of dividend reinvestment. And that's gonna make more sense when we actually earn some dividends in this portfolio. I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like in an update video. But essentially, when you earn dividends, they can be reinvested across your entire portfolio and also they will be reallocating your portfolio. And so what that means essentially is that you set your target allocations in terms of how much money you want in each stock or ETF. And then as more money goes into that portfolio, they're going to try to keep you as close as possible to that target allocation. And then the third reason why I'm using M1 Finance, of course, is that fact that it's completely free. They do not charge any trading commissions and the minimum balance is just a hundred bucks to get started. So it's a really easy way to begin investing in the stock market. And I think it's a great platform for long-term and dividend investors. Now, that being said, guys, I just wanna be transparent here and let you know that I am affiliated with M1 Finance, but that does not in any way influence my uh, thoughts and feelings on this brokerage. Now, I also have a completely free training that I put together that outlines the entire process of getting started with M1 Finance. I'm going to go ahead and link that up down in the description below. So if you decide that you want to check out M1 Finance and you want me to give you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set it up and how to use it, that's in the description below. Or you can also click the link and sign up for M1 Finance if you decide you want to support me for putting this video together today. Now, before we jump into my actual portfolio here, what I wanna talk about first is my financial recap for 2019, as far as where I'm at financially, what have I been doing with my money? So let's get into that right now. So for me, 2019 has actually been a lot of major life purchases that have been going on, and I did very minimal investing into the stock market. Uh, for those of you that have followed my channel pretty closely, you know that I bought my first property this year, which was a three-family property, which I did a down payment of about $22,000 on. Um, I also paid off my daily driver, which is just a Chevy Cruze. Um, I think I paid like $12,000 down on that car just to get it completely paid off. And then I also took on a very large remodel project on my property here um, at the end of 2019, and it's actually still underway. And essentially what it is, is this property that I purchased has a main house, two apartments, but it also had a guest house, which I could remodel, and then I was able to rent that out as well, which can make me some money. So I also invested about $40,000 remodeling that property, which was another sizable investment. And then finally, 
As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, in 2019, I bought my dream car, which is a 2009 Nissan GTR, and uh, that car ended up costing me $53,500. I initially put about $15,000 down, but at the end of this year, I paid that car off. So going into 2020, I am completely debt-free, car payment-free. My only major expense is my mortgage, and this puts me in a great position to begin investing more money into the stock market. And not to mention, guys, in addition to that, I also have a $50,000 liquid emergency fund in place that can cover any random unexpected expenses that come up associated with me or my vehicles or the property that I own. So I'm in a pretty good position here as far as investing in the stock market with my emergency fund in place. And so while I didn't do a ton of investing in 2019, I'm definitely ready to ramp that up in 2020. Now, in order to actually cover the remodel cost for that cottage on my property, I ended up selling the majority of the stocks that I own because I was up in pretty much every single one of them. The only stock that I did not sell is General Electric, which I still hold within my portfolio, but the rest of the stocks that I own, I ended up selling to free up some cash to invest in that project. Now, before you guys jump into the comment section and say, wait a second, I thought you were a long-term investor. What are you doing selling stocks? The only reason why I sold them is because I could get a better return on my investment by investing that money in my own property, allowing me to have potentially a fourth rental. There was literally no other reason for selling those stocks and I would not have sold them if I didn't have this big project. And at the time when I sold them, I had no idea how much money I would need to complete that remodel. So that is the only reason why I sold those stocks. It has nothing to do with the market uh, or anything like that. I simply needed the money and I had decent returns that I decided to lock in. So just to be as transparent as possible here, guys, let's jump into my portfolio and I'll show you exactly what I sold and what my return was on each investment. All that I ask in return, guys, is that you drop a like on this video if you enjoy this level of transparency uh, because there's no reason that I have to show my portfolio. I simply do this because I like being as honest with you guys as possible and showing you my real actual investments and returns. And I will say this, the majority of these sales took place in October and November, and had I held on to these stocks, obviously they would have been more valuable now than what I sold them for, but at the time I needed to free up some cash and I had decent returns, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna pull out and use that money towards my investment property. So first of all, like I said, I still own General Electric and I'll be holding on to those shares until they are in the green. Uh, that's one I've been bag holding for a while that I bought back in 2017. Uh, next up on the list here, I have Alibaba, which I sold for a 17.75% return. I also sold my Apple stock for a 24.31% return and I had an additional lot of Apple stock I purchased that I sold for a 15 0.33% return. I sold my Facebook shares for a 10.88% return. I sold JD for a 19.93% return. I sold my National Grid shares for about an 11% return. And that also does not factor in the fact that I've been earning dividends from that stock for the last couple of years. So that is just purely the return on the actual share price and the capital gain, nothing to do with the dividends. And then I also sold an additional lot of National Grid shares for a 24.11% return. I had some miscellaneous Vanguard index funds in that portfolio that I sold for around an eight to 10% return. The only thing I sold at break even was VXUS, which is an international ETF. Um, like I said, guys, I was just freeing up money from this portfolio to invest elsewhere. There's really no reason to ever sell an ETF unless you actually need that money for something. Otherwise, you just let it sit there and reinvest those dividends. The only stock I sold at a loss was Wabtech, but I actually got these shares for free because of my GE investment. All GE investors got a small portion of Wabtech uh, because they divested one of their businesses and it was a share-based purchase. So you ended up with some shares of this random uh, conglomerate company. Since I didn't know anything about it and it was such a small position, I just decided to sell it. So all in all guys, on this small investment portfolio that I had here, it was a 14.97% return or $4,053. And I took that amount of money and invested it right into this project on my property, remodeling um, that uh, guest house that I had, which will allow me to earn more rental income. So now I wanna explain to you guys exactly why I decided to do that. 
Now, before I renovated that guest house on my property, guys, it was making me exactly $0 per month. It was essentially a shell and it was doing nothing. So one of the best investments I could make looking at the numbers was actually fixing that up and getting it into a condition where I can rent it out and then have some rental income from that guest house on my property. Now, I've estimated that I can get about $750 to $850 per month if I rent out that property. And that means that my $40,000 investment that I pulled out of my stocks and invested in that property is going to make me about $9,000 to $10,200 per year, which is a 22.5 to 25.5% return. So it was honestly a pretty common sense decision here to take some money out of the market and put it into this other investment that was going to give me a greater ROI. But now at this point, I have invested that money. That project is just about complete. It's completely paid for. Um, the work is just continuing to be done. I have my emergency fund in place. All of my vehicles are paid off and I'm ready to begin easing back into the market. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I plan on investing $500 per week into this portfolio based on the current market conditions. Now that being said, if we begin to see a correction taking place, I will absolutely accelerate my investments and begin putting more money into the market. Beyond that, I am doing a couple of other investments as well. And if you guys want me to document these investments too, let me know down in the comment section below. But I'm also investing $2,000 per month into Fundrise, which is a online crowdfunded real estate investing platform. And I'm also investing $500 per week into Bitcoin, which is probably a crazy one because a lot of people who have watched my older videos know that in the past, I wasn't a huge fan of cryptocurrency but my opinions have changed. That's a conversation for another video, so let me know if you guys want me to do a dedicated video on my cryptocurrency investments. Uh, but that being said, guys, that's a wrap up on my 2019 financial life. Let's jump into my M1 Finance dividend portfolio. All right, guys, so here we are inside of my M1 Finance portfolio. Now, first of all, you're gonna kinda wanna ignore this return over here because this is actually not based on the investments I just recently made in this portfolio. So I initially had a $100 portfolio set up which held Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Vanguard. And to be honest with you guys, my timing with these investments was impeccable. Now, it was only a $100 investment I made for demonstration purposes of this brokerage, but as you can see, I did pretty well here. So if you look at Microsoft here, I ended up buying $10 worth of this stock at an average share price of 103.70. And since then it has returned 55.16%. So obviously guys, hindsight is 2020. I wish I had bought more than 10 bucks worth. Apple, even more substantial here. I bought at an average share price of 168.49, and I now have seen a 79.17% return since February 1st of 2019. So not even one year, 80% return on Apple stock. Absolutely unbelievable. The other stock I still hold here is a fractional share of Amazon. And this demonstrates perfectly what I mean by fractional shares because Amazon stock trades for around $2,000 per share. As you can see, I have $34 worth of this stock because I own just 0.01817 of a share. So I bought 30 bucks worth of this stock at 1650 a share. It's up 13.6%, which is still a really good return for less than one year. And then finally, if we look at VOO here, that gives us an indicator of how the market has done, we're up 21.47%. So 2019 actually turned out to be one of the best years uh, in terms of investing over the last few that we have had. So the new additions to my portfolio, guys, that's what we're focusing in this video here is the two new stocks, the dividend payers in my portfolio. That is going to be IBM and 3M. So basically what I've done here, because I already had VOO, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft in my portfolio, there's really no reason to sell them. So what I did is I dropped those allocations down to 1% of my portfolio. And right now, because I'm just investing in two dividend payers, I have 48% of my money going into IBM and the other 48% going into 3M. And in a little bit here, guys, I'll explain to you exactly why I've chosen these two investments. But basically, guys, rather than selling these stocks for no reason, I dropped the allocation down to 1%. I'll probably leave it as 1% of this portfolio 
because even if I invested $100,000, that means that would be just $1,000 invested in each one of these things here. So it's not a huge amount of my portfolio. But I just wanted to show you guys why that number up here might be a little bit misleading. And to be honest with you guys, uh, you know, I'm not buying these stocks because of the growth potential. I'm buying them primarily because of the fact that they pay very stable and uh, consistent dividends based on their track record and history. So first of all, let's click on IBM here and get a little bit more information about this company um, as far as what we are going to be earning as far as dividends go. And right now, IBM is paying a dividend yield of 4.82%, which is one of the primary reasons why I bought the stock. And it has a relatively low price to earnings ratio here of 15.5. And then second of all, guys, let's take a look at 3M here as far as the dividend yield. Um, you will see here that the current yield on this stock is 3.23% with a PE ratio of 20.4. So now let's go ahead and dive into each one of these stocks a little bit more, look at the share price history, and then I'm gonna to talk to you guys about why I've decided to begin investing in these two particular stocks. And I'm sure this goes without saying, but you always want to make sure that you're doing your own due diligence when you're investing in the stock market. And understand here that this video is for entertainment purposes only. This is what I choose to do with my money, but it's up to you to decide what you want to do with your money in terms of your investments. So first of all, guys, let's take a look at 3M and talk about the performance of this stock over the last couple of years. If you look at the last three months, uh, it actually has been doing pretty well over the last three months. Open it up to one year and you will see why I actually began investing in this stock. And that is because if we open it up to three years, you'll see that we're actually trading at a pretty low share price. Uh, this is a stock that used to trade for as much as almost $260 per share in January of 2018, and now it has slid all the way down to somewhere around 150 a share, now has recovered to you know 178 per share. So there's honestly a lot of stocks that I would love to invest in before I invest in 3M. The only issue is they're all trading at or near all time highs. And that's just one of my core investing principles for myself is that I just don't feel comfortable investing in certain stocks um, near or at all time highs. And if we open it up to the last five years, you'll see that you know we're trading kind of nearby what was a five year low for this company, somewhere around you know 140 per share. So based on the share performance here, this is one of the reasons why I decided to jump in and take advantage of some of the pessimism surrounding 3M. So now for those of you guys who are not familiar with 3M, if you have no idea what this company is, let's go ahead and talk about that now. And if you don't know exactly what 3M does, I don't blame you guys because it's kind of one of those things where you've probably seen this logo on different products, but you might have a hard time explaining just what it is that this company does. And that is because this is a conglomerate or a combination of multiple business entities under one name. So 3M has all of these different products that serve different industries and they are all under the main name of 3M. So just to show you guys the wide range of products that 3M offers, let's go ahead and jump over to their website here. And right off the bat, they have many products here for consumers and products for businesses. So first of all, let's start with that. We're just gonna go through the drop down here and I just wanna show you guys just the array of different products that 3M offers and all the different industries that they serve. Um, commercial, they have electronics, they have government related products, healthcare, manufacturing. They offer a lot of auto products, safety products. Uh, and this is just on the business side as far as the products they are offering. If we look at consumers, you're gonna see a lot of names and brands that you've recognized and probably used for years. Uh, a lot of this includes um, Post-its, that's one of their biggest brands. They also own the Scotch brand, if you've ever used or heard of Scotch tape. Um, they have all kinds of different well-known names and they serve both businesses and consumers with this wide variety of different products. So it's really kind of difficult to explain what it is that 3M does because they have so many different products serving different industries on both the business side and the consumer side. And so that is one of the reasons why I like this stock as a long-term investment because of the well-diversified 
um, businesses that they have and how they're getting money from all these different industries. Now, one of the issues that you may run into with 3M is that a lot of their products do serve what are called cyclical industries, which essentially means sales of these products are going to go up and down. For example, let's talk about their automotive detailing products. That's something they're well known for. Well, let's say we're in a prosperous economy. More people are going to be getting their cars detailed because they have extra money. Well, as soon as you see some economic retraction, that's something people are gonna stop paying for because it's a want and not a need. So as a result, less people are gonna be getting their cars uh, detailed and they're gonna see less demand for those products. That's what you see happen with a lot of the 3M product categories because they are serving cyclical industries. Now on the other hand, that's not entirely true because some of their products serve more defensive industries like consumer staples and healthcare. But that is one thing that people do mention about 3M is that when you do see a market crash or a market correction or economic retraction, it tends to hurt them because of the cyclical industries they are serving. Now, the reason why the stock has taken a haircut here over the last couple of years is due to disappointing financial results and weak organic sales growth, uh, which is something 3M is currently up against. And that is why we've seen this stock go from you know 250 to 260 a share all the way down to the 150 to 175 range due to pessimism surrounding Wall Street. And in 2019, they lowered their organic sales guidance and you know investors were just not happy with what they were seeing. Now, in my opinion, because this company's been around for so long, they're not going away anytime soon. They have diverse products across all different industries. I'm personally gonna take advantage of this sale and dollar cost average into shares of 3M and take advantage of that nice attractive dividend. Uh, and thanks to that share price dropping, it's an even higher yield than you would have gotten if you invested in the 200 to $250 range. All right, moving on now, let's talk about IBM and why I've decided to buy shares of this stock as well. And you might be laughing to yourself because this is probably another company where you're struggling to identify what is it that they actually do? Because a lot of us are familiar with the IBM of the past, the IBM ThinkPad, uh, and primarily that's what they were involved with for many years was computer hardware. So they manufactured desktop computers, they manufactured uh, computer screens, they manufactured the hardware internals for computers, and the only main hardware business they're still well known for is the mainframes, which are larger computers for more enterprise applications, uh, essentially not consumer products. So as far as consumer products go, uh, they saw this huge shift away from using you know, desktop computers and laptops to mobile. Uh, and that is why they essentially fell out of favor over the last couple of years. And that is because people were just not using desktop computers or the laptops or the ThinkPads. So essentially they had to leave behind the legacy business of hardware and explore new business ventures. And of course that takes time. Uh, and as a result of that, if we look at the stock over the last five years, it's done basically nothing. Uh, five years ago, this stock was, you know, 150 something a share. It's actually down 15% over the last five years. Uh, and that's because they've essentially had no growth, declining revenue as they have been adjusting their sales and figuring out what new businesses they want to be involved with. But that in particular is the reason why I'm so excited about IBM is because of the wide variety of businesses and industries they are involved with now. So over the last decade or so, IBM has been shifting into a lot of different industries in terms of their research and acquisitions, and they're involved in a wide range of industries now. Instead of hardware, they are now leaders in business cloud solutions. They are the largest provider of enterprise level cloud computing. They also are involved with mobile solutions, big data, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and they're even a leader in blockchain technology. And one of the big reasons why I invested in this company is because of a very large acquisition they made in 2019, purchasing a company called Red Hat, which is an enterprise level software company uh, that used to trade publicly. Uh, and they acquired them because this is the type of business they are looking to get into. And just to show you guys how large this acquisition was, it was a $34 billion acquisition. And as you can see right here, this company is worth about 120 billion. So they spent basically one quarter of this company's entire value acquiring this other company called Red Hat, 
just to show you how dedicated they are to this particular industry. So if IBM was still out there as a hardware company primarily making, you know, laptops and stuff for consumers, I wouldn't touch this company with a 10 foot pole. But the reason why I'm excited about them is that they have a very attractive dividend yield here of 4.82% and they're also involved in a lot of really great industries that I think have a ton of potential. And so maybe the last 10 years has been a snooze fest for IBM, but at this point in time, I think that it's something I want to be invested in. I see value in this company and the industries they are serving. And that is why I'm going to be dollar cost averaging into this stock and building up a position in IBM. So anyways, guys, that wraps up my first video here. As you can see, my portfolio is pretty small to start off with, only worth $1,206, but we're gonna be building it up month after month, and if we see good deals taking place in the stock market, I will certainly be ramping up my monthly contributions. Uh, my dividends will be reinvested. I'll update you guys on what that looks like. And it's going to be fun to see this portfolio grow over time. Uh, or maybe it won't. Maybe it'll go down and we'll have a good learning experience as well. Overall, I'm just really excited about this. And I hope you guys are too. So let me know what you guys think of this new series down in the comment section below. And as I mentioned, if you too decide you want to do investing with M1 Finance, the link is in the description below. And I've also included a link to that 30-minute free training that shows you exactly how to get started, how to navigate the platform, and invest with M1 Finance. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.